In the Dinosaurs and Mammals, we will be discussing about the dragons of the deep. So what does the dragon mean? Uh, in the ancient times, people used to see the bones of dinosaurs on the surface of earth and they attributed these bones to some mythical characteristics, some mythical organisms that were present earlier on the surface of earth. And they, for example, in the Chinese, they attributed those bones to the dragons. So this uh, word dragon here is an, a nod to that, the, that these bones are related to the uh, dinosaurs. And dragons of the deeps means that the oceans are deep. So here in this uh, topic, we will be discussing about the dinosaurs which were living deep in the oceans. So there, uh, the marine uh, reptiles, these diapses which were present in the marine environment, these dinosaurs, these were uh, predators, these were carnivores, and they lived during the Mesozoic. Several reptile groups become key marine uh, predators. These ichthyosaurus, ichthyo means fish, and saurus means the dinosaurs related to the dinosaur. So these fish-like dinosaurs, fish-shaped animals adapted to life in the sea. So they were living in the sea and they were adapted to that life and they evolved from land living diapsid. So first they were living on the land and then they migrated into sea. And here you can see one uh, ichthyosaurus which is Stenopterygus uh, and you can see uh, that it is pretty much streamlined body much looks like a fish but it is not a fish because it is a reptile. And here you can see only it's a uh, uh, structure right so it is a fossil but it has you can see the uh, paddles on the front side and you can see its tail uh, or the rear limbs as well so ichthyosaurs were long thin and their snout lined with the sharp teeth snout means their mouth uh, their jaws were lined with the sharp teeth and they fed on the ammonites belemnites and fishes so the organisms which were living in the uh, in the sea or ocean, they were feeding on those organisms. And if there is exquisite preservation of the fossils, we would see the tail fin, dorsal fin and the paddle outline. So tail fin, we can see some of the specimens which were excellently preserved. And dorsal fin means that the fin on the dorsum or on the back of the animal and uh, we could see that as well. And the paddle outline, because paddle is sort of uh, uh, very, very non-bony and uh, very, very delicate tissue. So it couldn't be preserved. But if it was preserved for some time, then it would leave some outline. And we could see some outlines of those paddles in some of the fossil specimens. So ichthyosaurs swam by beating their body and tail from side to side. So they wiggled to the water so uh, they were beating their body just like a fish would do and uh, their front paddles were for steering only so the front paddles they were just for the purpose of uh, determining their direction and these uh, th there were sp some specimens which would we would see in the fossil record that mother with the developing embryos inside their bellies so they were uh, vv paris they would you know give rise to the their babies and these babies were, uh, you know, produced inside the ocean because they cannot come on the land and, uh, you know, lay their eggs or the babies and then go back, right? So, there, it whole things was uh, were happening inside the ocean, just like whales and dof dolphins of today. But like whales and dolphins, but these are very different from these mammals like whales and dolphins. And then there is second marine uh, major group of reptile, which is plesiosaurs. So they had the long neck and small head. One of those groups is the pliosaur were larger and they had the shorter neck and large heads. So they were having long necks and small heads. So what would they do with their, their long neck? So they fed mainly on, uh, on fishes using long neck like a snake. So just like snake would do that the snake is... Uh, capturing its prey very quickly so that's what that's what they did with their long necks uh, just like snake they capture their uh, prey and here you can see the plesiosaurus which is cryptoclidus 
and here you can see it has very long neck and very a uh, small uh, head and it would you know just uh, go towards its prey the neck would be in a retracted position earlier but it would you know go in the front and capture its prey and its paddle are much more like wing like structure they would having a flying motion through which they would move in the uh, earth uh, in the ocean and then there are the plesiosaurs they swim by the beating their paddles in a kind of flying motion just like i have already explained the extraordinary diversity uh, diversity of tetrapod predators in the sea came to an end 65 million years ago so we know that what happened in the uh, 65 million there was a major uh, de- uh, extinction event due to the uh, crater uh, we know that because of there there was a meteor strike uh, in the chicxulub mexico and that led to the mass extinction and during that extinction these plesiosaurs they were not able to survive so this was a mass extinction during the great cretaceous and tertiary mass extinction which happened 65 million years ago the end, and this resulted into the end of the di- dinosaurs and pterosaurs so dinosaurs and their relatives all of them were gone during that period and you know when something goes down another thing will come up so the dinosaurs they were not uh, pre- uh, very much diverse they were not abundant so they l- left some space and that space was filled very beautifully by the rise of mammals